everyone. I'm so excited to talk to this person. One of my favorite topics, obviously food, but candy. We're going to talk about candy, candy at Christmas. And this person is the host of Candy is Dandy Pod podcast. And so I'm so excited to talk with him. Welcome. Hello, I am Daniel Zafrin, one of three hosts of Candy is Dandy, the Candy Review Podcast. I don't even think I said my where I'm from. I'm silly. Okay, <laughs> Julie Hogue of Vegetarians <laughs> and Meat Lovers Podcast, Split Table Recipes. Okay, Woo, I almost now we are, yeah, we our credentials are on the table now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us about you and your podcast, and you, of course, you can mention your other podcast as well if you'd like. Well, I don't think anyone's interested. See, the other podcast I do because I live in Los Angeles. And the other podcast is an LA history podcast, which I've, I've learned how many people are interested in that in LA <laughs> history, <laughs> but candy, everyone, I mean, not everyone, but more, a lot of people, more people love candy than they love Los Angeles. I think I can imagine. <laughs> so the show it's yeah. So every first and third Wednesday of the month, we pick a different candy, me and the two other hosts, Greg Gonzalez and Beto Sistos. So we pick a different candy, we give the history of the candy, and then we taste it and review it and rate the candy on on the air. That's so fun. And there's so many different kinds of candy, right? Like you can just keep going and going and going. Then you could do candies from other countries. That's what it's whenever I walk through like the candy aisle at a grocery store, I'm like, this is years of content ahead of me (laughs) right now. Because there's, yeah, like I, I've been trying to focus more and more on international candies Mm -hmm. because we do have international listeners and I feel Mm -hmm. bad whenever we pick something that in America is like, you know, it's always on the shelf. And then in other Mm -hmm. countries, they're like, I've never heard of this thing. So I, I like to try to pick things that are more available to other people. That makes a lot of sense. Like, and we have in, in Minnesota, I'm in Minnesota, we have this, I think it's called like the Minnesota's largest candy store or whatever. And it's so it's really big and it's long. And I've put a couple of videos, I think I put them on YouTube, walking down the this amazing store and they have all these different candies. And then they also have an international section where they have all these different countries, like chocolates from different countries and stuff. And it's just so much fun. My kids absolutely love it. You know, it's just so every kind of candy you can imagine. So it's like super fun. It's just a fun topic. See, that's what because the idea like the other the L.A. History Show we have been doing for 10 years. But during the lockdown of the pandemic, I was think you know, like the only fun we could have was like buying different foods to yeah. have. So it kind of dawned on me like I haven't tried 10% of all the candy I'm seeing in the grocery stores and who knows when this could all come crashing down and I will never have tried an Abba Zabba. <laughs> and so just kind of struck me of like, well, why don't I make an excuse to try all these candies <laughs> and that. demand people pay me for it? <laughs> I love that. And yeah. there are so many candies out there. And like, you know, the candies that I had growing up, like at a store, like the one I just talked about, I can find those candies to be like, hey, you know, hey, kids, this is a candy I had when I was a kid. But right. You can't find all of those kinds of candies everywhere online. You know, like you said, during the pandemic, everything became delivery. You know, yeah. everything was like deliveries exploded, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And a lot of stuff just doesn't exist. Like I used to love Butterfinger BBs. And the, they were, you know, like the little tiny balls of Butterfinger. And I thought they were great. And they just, I don't know where they, they stopped making them. But a lot of them also, as we've learned in doing the show, like a lot of times we'll bring in like, guys, this is my favorite candy and you're going to love it. <laughs> and then I haven't had one in 10 years, but it's my favorite candy. And then we all try it. And it's just embarrassing that like, this is what I said was my favorite candy because <laughs> recipes change. I don't know. Like just when you're examining food in a vacuum with two of your friends staring at you, it kind of uh, things taste different. <laughs> it's kind of like what I my husband and I were watching movies sometimes with our kids and we're like, oh, it's the best movie ever. You know, and it's made like a long time ago. And the kids are just like, 
that's so <laughs> fakey, mom. That's like terrible. Like, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah so it's so different. It's it's hard to say you like anything because whatever you like, everyone's going to take that as a challenge to not like it. <laughs> exactly. And it just doesn't, some of the stuff does not compare to today. So, yeah, yeah, I can see that happening in candy as well. Yeah, tastes, I mean, like we, because in each episode we do segment at the beginning of candy news of like some candy related. Sometimes it's like a candy someone stole like a truckload of cadbury or something but other times <laughs> like there's there's like uh like a cosa nostra like hidden force behind the candy industry that kind of dictates like this year people will like this and it's it's you know like i think last year it was like this year everything will be extreme sour extreme yeah. sweet so it's the tastes do change and sometimes artificially. Right. Well, that's interesting. I think also people's tastes change, like something that you liked a long time ago. You've been exposed to so many more things. It just yeah. is different. You know, it may not be as good as you remember because you've had all these other things in the meantime, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's kind of like even like Reese's peanut butter cups, which I will always maintain is my favorite candy. But then we yeah. tried it and it's I mean, I gave it a high score. But it's, it's not good. Like it's, it's gross. Like it's junk. You know, it's like McDonald's. Like it's kind of gross, but it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's good junk food. <laughs> it's good junk candy food. If there is such yeah. a thing. I think there is. There is. That's junk. Candy. Yeah. Junk food candy. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, like a, like from a candy shop, like a gourmet chocolate. That's mm-hmm. like, that's almost real food. <laughs> right. Well, and. I heard on the radio recently, someone was talking about how like just gross American chocolate is compared to the rest of the world. And so to me, that is junk food chocolate. It is because it's more like fakey tasting and yeah. it's artificial. It's not like getting the really good chocolates, you know? Yeah. People like we have like British listeners and stuff that are like, don't buy Cadbury that says it's made by Hershey on the back. Like the Cadbury made in America is made by Hershey. Mm. But that, even that being said, like, uh, I love a Three Musketeers. Like, they're mm-hmm. they're not good quality, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we go through Hershey bars, like, making s'mores and stuff. So we still use the Hershey yeah. bars. Hershey's. I don't think Hershey's is bad, but some no. of the chocolates are kind of not as good. But I think Hershey's pretty good. I, I don't think it's bad. Like, we, we've kind of been, we haven't done Cadbury, but we've done Meiji chocolate, which is, like, Japan's version of a Hershey oh. bar. And it's... That's another thing of like t- different countries' tastes. Like those, the Meiji bars are not very sweet. Like they almost take, yeah. taste like baker's chocolate. And it was not good to me at all. <laughs> that reminds me, my husband went to India one time and he brought candy back. Their candy, my kids were like, this is not candy. And it <laughs> doesn't taste like candy. It's not sweet. It's yeah. weird. It's almost weird. It was like, I can't even describe it. And that's yeah. candy. Yeah, there's a lot like, you know, like in like mochi is candy, but it's rice based. So it kind of tastes like rice. Mm. So it's just <laughs> like I, I, I have um, Eastern European American sweet tooth, really sweet impulses. So anything that isn't overly sweet is, uh, it just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> right. Well, I love dark chocolate too. I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of dark chocolate. I bought some really dark chocolate lately and it was, it's weird. It's like 85%. Yeah. Oh, I don't, it's a weird flavor. Like I like it's... dark chocolate with red wine, but th- that one's really weird almost. Yeah, I knew a guy who had the exact percentage of like, I cannot go over this percentage of uh. of chocolate or I can't eat it. <laughs> but it's kind of because there are, I don't know how they come up with these weird percentages, but like there's so many different candy bars like this is 93% dark chocolate. This is 82% dark chocolate. And it's, I guess 100% is just baker's chocolate, right? Because there's like oh, no, yeah. no dairy or anything in it. Sure. So like... I'm curious to see how far down that road I can go before it just isn't edible to me. Cause oh, that exactly. I, I was in China once and the, I saw a giant chocolate bar with like the skyline of Shanghai made on it. And I was like <laughs> looking at it for days and I was like, I'm going to buy this towards the end of my trip. And I bought it and I took a big bite into it and it was Baker's chocolate. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. And yeah. I've never actually tried Baker's chocolate. I've used it in recipes, but so I'm I don't really, think really sure what it tastes like. I don't think you're supposed to eat it. It's it's just supposed you're supposed to like shave it off into brownies or something. Like I, right. I don't think you're supposed to sit there and chomp on it in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I suppose we should talk about one of our major topics we're going to talk about, which is Christmas candy. Now, Christmas yeah. candy, there's so many candies. And you have you have some information about history of Christmas candies to share. Yeah, I've got I've got some Christmas and I've got one Hanukkah also, the, the only Hanukkah candy we've got. Because each year we last year we did on the show, we did candy canes, obviously. And then we did Ferrero Rocher, mm. which I consider to be a Christmas candy. And I'll I'll explain yeah. to you why. But there this year, what did we do this year? Oh yeah, we did Hanukkah Gelt this year. We 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 had all two of the major religions represented now but yeah there's there's just um i mean every holiday seems to have its candy yes and the candy that kind of represents each holiday is usually bad <laughs> <laughs> like candy canes aren't really good hanukkah gelt isn't really good candy corn for halloween isn't really good peeps right. for easter isn't really good like all of these signature candies are kind of terrible but yeah the, so yeah i mean candy canes the most obvious one that's another thing the the like lore behind why we eat these things on these holidays has so many different like there's so many different versions of what it could be like nobody seems to really know and people also kind of seem to just be making up what they think it is because <laughs> like the most common story for candy canes i heard was that it was in the 1600s in germany this priest made sugar sticks to give to children in church who were like bored out of their minds for the <laughs> christmas ceremonies so he made them for them and then but like candy isn't allowed in church so he turned it into a, a crook and then he was like well it's religious now so they can have it so that's Funny. that's kind of, that's kind of like the most accepted theory of those but it still kind of doesn't really make sense <laughs> but <laughs> kind of like the shepherd staff right the yeah shepherd, shepherd yeah. staff thing but then like there's stories that like candy canes were used as symbol of like persecuted catholics in europe and some people think that like the crook is should be the other way and it's a j for jesus and like the red oh. is blood and the white is is purity or like there's so many wow. weird like people are just kind of attaching meaning to a gross candy i think <laughs> to justify <laughs> them being around still from the 1600s wow, how long it's been wow yeah yeah i mean it came the exact date was 1840 not date the exact year was 1847 that they came to the U.S. in Ohio. A mm. Swedish, a German Swedish immigrant bring them, brought them, and I think he also is the same guy who first brought Christmas trees to America. Oh, but, oh interesting. Yeah, that, that's all. That's another part of the show that, like, I'm glad we do the history of them because there's so many things that we like. Every single candy has a pretty weird story. <laughs> and it's just, we just kind of gloss over it and shove it in our mouths. Right. Oh, interesting. I never even thought of that. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, Snickers is named after the owner, the guy who created its horse. But three Musketeers used to come as three different flavors. That's why they're Three Musketeers. Yeah. Butterfinger. The, the weirdest story was Butterfinger because they used to do these like, promotional campaigns for Butterfinger where they would just drop Butterfinger out of an airplane over like <laughs> populated areas and people would like fight each other for Butterfingers <laughs> and one of the one like a kid won a contest to go sit in one of those planes that did it and then that kid grew up to be the guy who flew the plane that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Oh. And oh that was gosh. like his first ever plane ride was in the Butterfinger plane. Like it's, oh there's so many weird stories. That is that a very weird story. It's crazy. I mean, yeah. it's obviously not something that I don't think uh, the company's probably <laughs> wants to promote, but it's just, yeah. it's just weird. These weird yeah. stories. That's, but yeah, that's so that we did Hanukkah. 
yeah, can't, so on the show, we rated zero to five cavities for each candy. <laughs> candy canes. I don't even know if I would give candy canes a one. <laughs> Do you like candy canes? I buy them more for tradition. My kids will eat them. They kind of like the flavored ones better than the mint, but we kind of just buy it out of tradition. I mean, there's been some years where they didn't even eat them all, but I don't tend to eat them, but my yeah. kids do. I kind of buy them, like I said, just more for tradition to hang them on. The tree, yeah, the decoration. Know? It's edible decoration, but the, the right. there's, some, there's some flavored ones that are actually pretty, like we try to, it was like a spicy mango one, and that was really Ooh. good. Like there's good flavors. But yeah. the regular one is, I mean, it's just a mint. It's not that it's right. bad. It's just a mint. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not very exciting. I remember as a kid, though, I loved getting like the big candy cane, like the big, you know, like the rod. I don't yeah. Know, we, just, we just like that. We thought that was cool. It's it different cool. probably, you know? Yeah. And you could use it as an actual shepherd's staff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but. Yeah. So, so this year, yeah, we did Hanukkah Gelt this year, which that one is even, even, you know, uh, more confusing and like nobody really knows the true story. Cause like, so the Hanukkah holiday is celebrating the Maccabees retook Jerusalem and they lit to like rededicate the temple of Jerusalem. They lit some oil that was supposed mm-hmm. to burn for one day. It lasted for eight days. That's why there's eight days of Hanukkah. So sure. to come in, in, in actual real world history to commemorate that event, they, they minted coins that had menorah on it. So that's one theory of why, because Hanukkah Gelt is, you know, it's just a chocolate coin and it has okay. a menorah on it. And that's why to sort of commemorate that in that way. But then there's the other theory that, that, because I guess the word, the word for education in Hebrew sounds like Hanukkah. So mm-hmm. it became sort of a holiday of like teaching and, and education. So I guess parents would give their kids coins to Mm. teach them how to give charity so there was the kid they gave kids Mm. coins and the kids were supposed to use those coins to like basically buy hanukkah candles for people who couldn't afford them so that they could celebrate the holiday but i guess you know you know how many kids are actually going to they you give a kid (laughs) a coin are they really going to go help other people with it and then eventually that just kind of turned into well let's just give them chocolate coins instead they can't they they can't do damage with that so that's that's kind of those are the kind of the two biggest theories of that and then those came to the u.s in the 1920s in new york city when more jewish immigrants were coming and it they sort that's when they sort of like standardized like we're going to wrap them in foil we're going to put them in these little mesh bags and that's when that kind of took off but those also are not good. You know, it's 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 hard to rate that one because that's basically just chocolate. Like you're rating chocolate. So it depends, yeah. you know, if you get it at a great chocolate shop, it'll be good. But if you get the mass produced mm-hmm. one, it's not going to be good. So it's that's, be good. it's also mm-hmm. kind of hard to do. But that's another thing. Like, it's just a decoration. It's just like, it's mm-hmm. just like candy canes. <laughs> They're not right. meant to be good. <laughs> and then America obviously copied that because I, you know, we have the, coins too that are look like you know the quarter and they're they're chocolate too and they're wrapped in foil so that's probably yeah. they like copy that it's like oh let's make our version but why like what a, like why i know right? why <laughs> they're not good but i i also one of the other things i heard was that i guess in the netherlands i think they would or the saint nicholas's day or whatever oh, like yeah yeah they would mm-hmm. give boy because the word gelt means money it just means money in yiddish oh, so okay. And I guess that's similar to the Dutch word because they would also give chocolate coins to kids for St. Nicholas Day, which is you know, connected to like it's all that's the other thing of like Hanukkah has sort of been influenced by Christmas in America. So like it's yeah. not it's not an important holiday by any means in like mm-hmm. the grand scheme of religion. But mm-hmm. because it's kind of around the same time as Christmas, because everyone else in America is doing Christmas, it kind of became sort of a thing of like, well, let's do stuff too. <laughs> right, right. I can, I can totally see that. And that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I okay, don't know. Well, what... We don't do that, but we do this. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're, we want to fit in, but we're, we're also ourselves. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know why people would want to make their own. Cause yeah, they sell gold coins with just like JFK in the supermarket like what what holiday is this for for jfk day (laughs) right the so the the other 
this next one, I have never had one of these. You know those Terry's chocolate oranges? Oh, we love those. I've but never had house. one. They look they're really, really good. good. They are good. And they make a raspberry one, too, which they're both really good. I buy that those every Christmas, and our whole family chows those. And they're fun. They're just kind of fun. They're like Because you, like, you, smack them, right? And they come right. apart. Yeah. And then each chocolate is, like, a piece of the orange, and it's, like, imprinted like a segment of an orange. Yeah. And so, and it's, when I was younger, I used to think, or, you know, even before we had kids, I'm like, oh, that sounds terrible. Orange and chocolate. <laughs> but it actually is very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the biggest orange and chocolate fan, but if it's, if it's like a hint of orange, I think I'll be okay with it. Yeah. It, it's not overpowering. I, the smacking it is really what I'm interested in. I want to, <laughs> I want to smack one of those and see it come apart. But isn't that weird though, that like, cause I, 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 I kind of got to the bottom of why oranges are considered a Christmas thing, because I guess it's another, it's the St. Nicholas story of like, mm. there was a poor man who couldn't aff- afford the dowry for his daughters to get married, but like he wouldn't okay. accept charity. So St. Nicholas got like gold, three gold balls. And what I read is he threw him down the guy's chimney like a grenade and they just happened to like roll into some socks they had drying by the fire. And like, that's where stockings come from. Like, it's such a weird, I mean, if he can make that shot, I understand why he's a saint. Like if he could throw no, these gold no. balls right into a sock, but talent. I know, but that's, that's kind of, that's what I read is like why because because the orange balls sort of morphed into like well an orange is an orange ball and that that's what i understand why people eat oranges during christmas i don't know (laughs) i don't either i always just assume that maybe that's when they were really in season or ripe or something i don't know because my dad used to do that all the time he would put like those little clementines in our stockings you know like that would be a thing that they would add and we thought that was cool i'm like oh there's an orange even though we had oranges in the house but the right. orange in the stocking was like more right special, you know <laughs> those were thrown through the chimney to get there right. <laughs> but yeah i mean are oranges a winter thing i don't even like i live in los oh, angeles the the because i know that when when Los this is where both my podcasts are coming together. When like Los Angeles used to ship out all the oranges during mm-hmm. the winter. I mean, not just during the winter, but you know, they could right. grow here during the winter. So yeah. it's also kind of like, oh, it tastes something kind of fresh during the winter months in in right. on the East Coast or something. But yeah, I I I don't know. I don't know when oranges grow. Like maybe that it could just be as simple as that. I don't know. Right. I mean, it could be. And I know, obviously, they grow oranges in, like, you know, down, like, Florida area and that yeah. kind of too. So, I guess since they were always around more, I just assumed that maybe this is a good time of season for them. They're more in season. I assumed that also, but maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they only <laughs> grow during the summer and we're, like, just storing them all up for the winter. I have no idea. Right. Um. So, this next one, tell me if you think this is a... a Christmas candy, but do you think almond roca is a Christmas candy? I do. And I think, you know, I think like you were saying before, it's driven by someone. Like someone just starts to advertise it or it's just suddenly around. It's suddenly in the stores and they, they place it in certain places. So I think that that totally influences it for me. Yeah. Cause I see them around all the time. There's also a few others like the bocce or baki, however you pronounce it, the like little Italian chocolates. Those I feel like are always around and lint the lint balls, the like Lindor oh, truffles. Yes. But I looked oh, into those. There's no Christian undertones. Like there's no reason why those are around during Christmas. They're just, I think that is just marketing for those. And it's yeah. worked. <laughs> it has worked because that's totally a Christmas thing. And yeah. my kids have come to be like, well, where's those candies in the red wrapper? You know? Yeah. Like, oh, maybe that's it. They are, they're in a red wrapper. Yeah. They, they kind right. of look like little santas i don't know <laughs> tiny round little santas but the the almond roca is that one seems to be really just because they come in like a gold wrapper like they're mm-hmm. in a tin and okay. they're in a gold okay. wrapper and that's kind yeah. of like i need a last minute gift and i'm here at cvs 
this right. is kind of the gift. This I could bring this to this Christmas party and it'll be okay. It just looks festive, perhaps. It looks yeah. festive. And people like they tried selling them for a while outside of the wrapper, like just mm-hmm. in a tub. And people were okay. like, No, we want the wrapper. Like yeah. bring back the wrappers. But so this one and the next one. So almond rocas were invented in Tacoma, Washington, and it was right by this military base. So mm-hmm. these soldiers started eating them and that got them a contract with the u.s military to provide them to soldiers during world war ii who then brought them to asia with them and during like lunar new year and stuff in asia gold is like really good luck so these came in golden wrappers so these became really popular in asia around lunar new year because it's that is like i'm giving you 500 pieces of gold (laughs) basically and it looks really nice. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's very strange just because it has a gold wrapper. But <laughs> Almond Roca got there is so interesting. Like, yeah, that they brought it there. That's quite a story. I mean, yeah, I maybe never had it there. There there's there's a lot of different candies that kind of like World War Two was directly responsible for them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, People didn't have enough of this, so they started making this. People went over here and they brought them this. Like it, it spread so many different ideas and things. Not that I'm trying to say World War II was great and it spread right. ideas everywhere, but it, it led to so many different situations that things that we have every day now came out of whatever desperation people were in because of it. Right. I mean, like, that's just yeah <laughs> no, I was just gonna say not unlike COVID right like that changed everything too you know like yeah what happens can change you know so many things the repercussions are ginormous yeah it's it's I mean we are we are a connected world mm-hmm. for better or worse <laughs> <laughs> but the so the the last specific Christmas candy I have is Ferrero Rocher which mm was made it's made in italy but the guy who or the dad of the guy who invented ferrero rocher also invented nutella tic tacs and kinder products and new i know like the the a a hero a god amongst men that this but (laughs) the the thing with nutella was that during world war ii they didn't have enough chocolate so he started mix Mm -hmm. like cutting it basically with hazelnut to make the uh-huh. chocolate go further. And uh-huh. that's where Nutella came from. Uh-huh. Yeah. But so the Ferrero Rocher is the most explicitly religious one I have because the guy who invented it was very religious and he would make this trip to this place in France called the, the Rocher de Massa Biel, which was like where the saint saw the Virgin Mary like 18 different times. So it's like this. Okay. It's like this cave. And if you look at a picture, he designed the Ferrero Rocher to look like this cave. So oh, if you wow. cut a Ferrero Rocher in half yeah. and you look at a picture of this cave, you see like the rocky exterior. There's oh, wow. the like ro- there's the like the layers beneath it. There's the darkness of the Nutella like thing. And then the hazelnut in the middle is supposed to be like a little Virgin Mary sitting in there waiting for you. It's, it's such a weird, like what a thing to design a candy after. Right. But I do have to say, it's interesting. Like when I take a bite of one, I look at it, you know what I mean? Like I'll it's interesting yeah. to look at, it. so I do look at it. I, I yeah. don't know why, but that's what I do. <laughs> you want to see the Virgin Mary. You're checking to see if she's in there, <laughs> but we do, we have a TikTok account for our show where I do like autopsies of candies. And in this one, we have the slice of it next to the picture of it. And it's, it's very strange how similar they actually look to each other. But I Ferrero Rocher, I, I think these are really good. I love Ferrero they Rocher. Are good. They are good. They're, and I didn't really know that was a Christmas thing until somebody introduced it to me at Christmas. And now forever it is a Christmas thing. But when I was real small, I didn't even, we didn't have it at my house. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, it's so this is another one like in like um almond roca is that cuz they're gold they're really popular in Asia as well. So sure. it seems to be like a lot of immigrant families in America get these as sign kind of like almost like a like a things are good here kind of gift like look look mm-hmm. at the bounty of America sort of thing. Gotcha. So that's why there's they sell them in such big packages around like you could get like a 50 pack of these 
around this time of year. And they're, that's what's so crazy about them is that you get them in such big amounts and they're so good. Yeah, like it feels yeah. wrong that they right. you get so many of these good things at once. <laughs> exactly. Well, and you know that, what if they do it year round? Because if they only do it at Christmas, it also makes it kind of a special thing. Like it's just available now in these large quantities. I've never paid attention. I they sell them, but not in as big of containers as they do this time of year because like i was just at a at a i guess it was more of a thanksgiving thing but there was a big like vase full of ferrero rocher and it's Mm -hmm. such you know it's it's like a embarrassment of riches like they're so good and i could eat so many of them if i wanted to (laughs) and i do want to oh i know they're so good one thing when you were talking about the nutella it reminded me i interviewed a cookbook author and blogger from, well, she's from, she lives in Italy and then she also goes to Canada, but she was telling me that in, in Italy, everyone uses Nutella and they put it on everything. She's like, yeah, it is. So, I mean, we have it here too, but I don't think it's as popular, but she's like, yeah, they put it on literally everything there. I, I lived in France for a year for a study abroad thing. And I Mm. couldn't even eat Nutella for years when I got back because I had so much Nutella there. Like it, it's, Uh It it really is. You don't see it like, you know, they sell it more and more these days here, but you, yeah. it, it really is like, you know, it's like on the table for breakfast. There's butter, jelly and Nutella there for you to take in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's really good, though. Like it's it a shame that it's not. It. It's kind of surprising that it's not more popular in America. Like it's it's just candy you're spreading on your breakfast. Right. <laughs> I love to mix it with other things. Like if you ever spread it on a piece of toast and then added cream cheese, oh that's really that good. Is, have you had a Nutella and peanut butter sandwich? Yes, so that was my next thing. Was it that's so good that's... too? Or even on like a rice cake if you want to get cut your calories a little bit, put it on a rice <laughs> cake. And it's so and then you get that crunch that's almost like yeah. candy. A candy yeah. Like you're getting this crispiness that is less calories and then you got the peanut right. butter and the Hey, if we put Nutella on some celery, it's good for us now. I I could eat it all day long. (laughs) Other thing I wanted to ask you about is you, have you guys ever talked about cookie butter on your show? Have you tried cookie butter? I've tried cookie butter and I love Mm -hmm. cookie butter, but so once also in each episode, we play a different candy related game at the end of each show. Mm -hmm. And one thing we do is a debate of whether a certain thing is candy or not. And like, I'll put it, I'll put polls out. Is cookie butter candy? Is Nutella candy? I don't know if Nutella is even candy. Like it's, it's it's because we did one recently on Hall's cough drops. Oh yeah. And while everybody (laughs) agreed, this is not candy. Everybody also kind of was like, but it is candy. Right. Like it, it's medicine, but it's pretty much candy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think of, you ever tried those chewy Tums? Those taste oh, like candy too. Yeah. I mean, they totally, like, like they're like good, you know? <laughs> I think Pepto-Bismol takes, tastes really good. Like I would drink that <laughs> as like a soda. Like if it was lightly carbonated, I would drink Pepto-Bismol as a soda. It, it kind of tastes like Smarties to me. And I'm the one person in the world who likes Smarties. <laughs> My kids like Smarties. They're good. I, I will occasionally will eat Smarties, but oh, what's your, do you have a favorite candy? See, I, I still maintain, I think I gave Reese's mini cups a 4.95. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that was my highest score, but we haven't done peanut M&Ms yet. And those uh, might be my favorite candy. It's I between, it's between Reese's cups and peanut M&Ms. Yeah. I love that chocolate and peanut butter taste too. I mean, it's just, it's really good. I agree. Uh, like my a lot of people don't that. like it. Isn't that weird? I was just going to say that my kids are they're like, oh, the peanut ones. I actually love them. They're, yeah. I mean, they're iconic. They're great. They're around for a reason. But a lot of people like Beto on on one of the hosts of the show is not really a can a chocolate fan. Like he prefers oh. gummy, chewy sorts of things. Mm-hmm. But I just can't understand how someone couldn't like chocolate. Like, how is me neither? It's and there's a lot of people like him. He's not alone. <laughs> That's foreign to me. I don't understand. <laughs> it's it's a it, it does not compute with me. I don't get it. <laughs> no, but you know, and I'm like one of those people. I don't really like the sour candies. Like my kids love those, but I'm not a fan of the sour candies. 
Like I wouldn't choose that. I like chewy stuff, but not really necessarily sour. But that's like they're one of their favorites, you know. Yeah, I like it, but though like sour stuff especially, but chewy gummy things overall give me sores in my mouth after like yeah. two handfuls of them. So maybe that's why I don't. I gravitated more towards chocolate because that mm-hmm. that just turns my teeth into jelly, and <laughs> but my gums are okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then the sour stuff too. I think if you eat too much of it, it can start to impact your mouth too. Like they're they're the acidity yeah, of it. It like um sour patch kids, which aren't even they're not even that sour, but like whatever's on them just like just takes a layer off my tongue. Like it just mm-hmm. feels so raw after I eat sour patch kids, and they're not even that good. <laughs> <laughs> One of the grossest things I've ever seen, which my, when my boys were younger, we went to that big giant candy store, you know, in Minnesota. And they had all these different gummies from all around the world, too. And one of the gummies was a big giant snake. <laughs> made me want to throw up when I watched them <laughs> eating this big giant gummy snake. And they thought it was fantastic. And I was just like, I can't even look at you, honey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, were they eating it like an even bigger snake and just like unhinged their jaws and were oh, gobbling gosh. it up? I used to, because I remember when I was little, I would get those giant jawbreakers and I would just be like thinking back on it. I want to throw up uh, because I would just be like licking at that for weeks. (laughs) And that's so (laughs) disgusting. I know, right. I might like keep it in like a baggie or like a Tupperware, you know? Yeah. You know, know, it's it's still, yeah, but it's still, it's just like your saliva is just sitting on that and you're just licking it all over. It's disgusting. (laughs) It is. And you want to like, is it, is it probably decaying from that as it's sitting there and then you go yeah. and you lick it, you know? Uh, yeah, you're eating like a slowly rotting egg. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember that. Like, I remember one time my sister had it and she kept wanting, because they're different layers, you know? So she wanted to be like, oh, now I have this layer. And so she like was really <laughs> analyzing and talking about all the different layers she had. Been yeah. <laughs> That's was- how they... That's how they, they hook you in is, well, what's on the next layer? You got to keep licking this rotting piece of candy and find out. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to eat those. Do you smash it? I don't understand. I mean, yeah, I guess you could. And then you're like eating shards of candy, you know, it's like yeah. shards of glass when you're yeah. chewing it. <laughs> no, I, I love the idea of a giant jawbreaker, but it is the most impractical candy I could think of. It is. It is. I think it's fun though. Like when the kids, when we went to that store and like, just to see all these different candies from different places around the world in one store, you know, like, well, this is what, you know, and and whether that's actually indicative of the candy of that area, who knows, but it's still kind of fun to just like walk around and like, Oh, look at that. Just, there's a lot of weird things that. Yeah. That's me. That's what's fun. Like I, in Los Angeles, there's a lot of different, you know, like there's Filipino grocery stores, there's Chinese grocery stores, there's Japanese grocery stores, there's there's all these specific things. And I love just going in and walking through the candy aisle and seeing like, oh, so this is what they like. There's there's like you were saying before, there's months and months and months of episodes we could do on these candies I've never heard of in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's so fun, too, because. I don't know. Candies are special. People think of candies as a special thing. It's a treat, right? Yeah. Also around holidays, you know, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's comforting. It's fun. And everyone has an opinion on them. (laughs) So it's more stuff you can argue with your family about during the holidays. (laughs) Because we need more of that, right? (laughs) (laughs) Let's put all politics aside and talk about whether or not almond roca are good instead. (laughs) Well, I guess that'd be better than some of the things people talk about. (laughs) I would much rather be in that conversation. (laughs) Oh, for sure. For sure. So other, do you guys have some other holiday ones coming up or do you focus on New Year's or what do you do on your next episode coming up? The, I, I think the next episode I get to pick is going to be Valentine's Day. And oh, yeah. I, I don't, even, I don't know if I want to say what I'm going to do. Cause I want to, su- if my yeah. co-hosts listen to this, I don't, I want to right. surprise them, but there is a iconic Valentine's Day candy that I'm looking forward to bringing yeah. to them as my special little Valentine's that awesome. they are. That's fun. <laughs> and yeah. And you have the whole, like the heart with all the different kinds of candies. My kids love that too. They yeah. try to get different ones every year and we just leave it on the counter and that's yeah. a lot of fun with that. You know, like they like to look at the little, 
they like the ones that have like the map in there, like this one is this, and like you know, it's like a drawn picture of what the candies are and what they have inside of them. Right. Yeah. So, have you ever seen those? I think so. so. Last year for Valentine's Day, we did the sweet hearts. You know, the like chalky oh. little hearts. Yeah. And that was I used to say I liked those, but those are not very good. <laughs> I kind of like the yellow ones, though, I have to admit. They're banana. Are they used to be banana? They're, I, yeah. I yeah, those so. ones. I think they might have changed a few of the flavors, but the I remember. Are different, too. Yeah, because I think they went out of business, actually, and they were bought uh, by a different company to, we must have this disgusting candy. That's Valentine's Day gross candy is the yeah, sweethearts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how candy is every part of everything? And like around here, I don't know if it's other parts of the country, but like when it's like a July 4th parade, they throw candy off the, the floats. And so then the kids run and pick up the candy and put it in their bags. You can't go to a parade without a bag. You'll be missing out. Oh, you won't really? be getting all the candy. I don't know. Maybe that's just a thing in the Midwest. I don't know. but I don't know if I've noticed. I, I mean, no, I don't think they throw much out of, off of our parades here in Los Angeles. Interesting. And, you know, maybe that's just a thing here. But yeah, that's always a thing. If we, when we go to a parade, my kids, you have to have a bag because we're huh. going to put all the candy. You right. Need a bag, right. That's fun. It's like it's like a off season Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> where you get the throw, candy like... thrown at you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They throw it and then every, all the kids run and scatter and pick up as much candy as they can. And then they'll also throw like those freezies, like those frozen things, uh, like a popsicle in a tube. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. But this is, these, these parades are way better than our parades. We don't get anything for free. <laughs> they'll throw like business cards or something maybe to a, this is okay. You're in Minnesota. You're close mm-hmm. to Canada. Have you ever heard of the phrase Halloween apples? I have, but I don't remember anything else other than that I've heard that. Because I guess in Alberta, in Canada, kids don't say trick or treat when they go trick or mm. trick or treating. They don't say trick yeah. or treat. They can knock on your door and say Halloween apples. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yeah, we we learned this like a year ago and we can't stop thinking about how strange that is. <laughs> That is strange. So do they really get apples or is it candy that looks like an apple? Everything. It's like an alternate universe where everything is the same about Halloween, except instead of trick or treat, they say Halloween apple, Halloween apples. They, oh, everything okay. else is the same. Yeah. Cause I know like apples have an association with Halloween, you know, like bobbing for apples and candy apples, but they don't get apples. They just get, you know, little Snickers and stuff like that. Oh, weird. That is very bizarre. Yeah, it's now that you know it, it will never leave your mind. No, it won't. <laughs> it's too it's too unusual. <laughs> oh, it's so interesting. Do you do it now? Are, there really aren't any New Year's candies. I think it's just extended from Christmas, right? I mean, it's just. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think so. Not that I can. Yeah, it feels like just the leftover Christmas candy you're eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. New Year's just all I can think of is champagne. That I guess that's all people eat on New Year's is champagne. The other one we see a lot around here at Christmas time is those Andes mints where they're like half chocolate, oh, half like I love cream. those. Yeah, those are really good. That that's a good chocolate. I like that. I think those are really good, but I don't see those around here during I yeah. see the the only time I see those and they, they haven't done this in probably fifteen years, but is on a pillow in a hotel is an Andes yeah. mint. <laughs> right, right. That's interesting. That's yeah, interesting, it's more though. around yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's sure well, regionals are different too, probably regional areas. Yeah. Yeah. I like we just did something called Goldenberg's Peanut Chews, which is like mm-hmm. made in Philadelphia and I guess is pretty prevalent around like the East Coast metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. And I've heard of that one. It it's not very good. But that's <laughs> like they're I don't think they're very prevalent anywhere else in the country. <laughs> I mean, like, there's some terrible candies. I don't know why this popped in my head, but those, like, peanuts, where they're, like, kind of, like, foam when you bite into them, like, circus peanuts. Circus peanuts, yeah. yeah. I I don't know if I've ever actually had one of those, but those, 
they've got a bad re- they've got like a candy corn level reputation <laughs> <laughs> my son actually lo- they actually like candy corn but they also like those pumpkins like they're like they're really big they yeah like corn, but they're like these big pumpkins yeah. the youngest just like he just still loves those like i remember liking them as a kid but i can't eat them now i just can't even eat them i it's just like has to be just like a texture thing that people like yeah. about them because they don't taste good. <laughs> like it's just satisfying to gnash into a pumpkin. Right. <laughs> they're so waxy. I don't know. They're just, yeah. I don't know. To me, they just seem like wax. No, I, I don't get it. <laughs> people are into th- my strange addiction. People are into some strange things. <laughs> they are. Oh, the other one I often see growing up, even I would see would be the chocolate covered cherries. At Christmas time, um, which which ones? Because like they would like have kind of like some like goo, white goo inside. The it's like really... Queen Anne, yeah. Ones, I that's that may be something I might be doing in for a holiday in a few months. But those, I really like those because like those theirs are so sweet. And I they love are. how sweet they are. Like they hurt my teeth. They're so sweet and I like it. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I know exactly what you're saying. And, and for me, I like them, but you can't really eat a lot of them because it's like an overload. I need like I, space in between it. Yeah. I, if it weren't for my teeth starting to hurt so badly, I think mm-hmm. I could eat a lot more, but like it becomes physically painful to eat those uh-huh. because the, like my receding gums can't handle that syrup that's inside of them. Oh yeah. Well, I've got sensitive teeth too. So, but I use the sensitive teeth toothpaste but before I did that. I would, that would happen to me. Now it doesn't yeah. because, Hey, I'm a commercial for that. It actually yeah. works, right? <laughs> I need to start using Sensodyne so that I can start eating more of these chocolates. There you go. Now you they should do a partnership between those two companies. <laughs> every, I actually really should. yeah. Every box of them comes with a little Sensodyne toothpaste tube. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> Oh, this has been so amazing. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about before we end? And also, like, tell everybody where you are and how they can find you. And I really had a blast talking with you. This was really Yeah, cool. this was very nice. So if you want to listen to the show, it's just Candy is Dandy, the Candy Review podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, you'll find us. And if you want to see those autopsies on TikTok, I think we're at Candy is Dandy pod. I think that's our account. I don't really know. I think that's what it is. Some, I think Candy is Dandy was taken. So I think I had to add pod to the end of it. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you could, those are, those are, it's, it's like a very brief history and watch it get sliced up. And yeah, our episodes come out the first and third Wednesday of every month. That sounds fun. I have to ask you about your autopsy. Do you take like a knife and like cut through it or how do you do it? I, I've got a special knife that I use to slice through all these candies. Yeah, it's some of them are kind of like, what am I going, you know, I'm going to slice into this bar of chocolate. How interesting is that? But that's, I tried for a while, like maybe I got like a little blowtorch and I was like, maybe I could melt them down. But like chocolate doesn't really melt as easy as you would think. It just Mm -hmm. kind of burns. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And that doesn't look very appealing, like. It's usually slicing them up occasionally, like I've microwaved some Jolly Ranchers down because they turn into like a nice goo and a candy cane. I melted a candy cane down and they become like rubbery. (laughs) Oh, it's so weird. I think my kid came home one day from school and said, I can make a candy cane disappear. And all he did was like basically put it in a cup of water. Right? Yeah, and that was the that was the magic trick. It like <laughs> eventually totally was like gone, and it was just all. <laughs> hey, it, it's like uh, it's it's like cotton candy. It'll just mm-hmm. kind of disappear into the ether on its own. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask too, like, do you ever like heat them up or freeze them? Because it's like gonna cut differently if they're like firm or they've been in the freezer or they've been in the microwave yeah it definitely like i have tried to not do chocolate things during the summer months because Mm -hmm. it just becomes disgusting when like Mm -hmm. you're trying to manhandle a piece of of a twix or something it just becomes gross to look at oh yeah absolutely (laughs) yeah Oh, it's just so amazing. Thank you so much. This was really fun. I yeah, thank you for having adding. me. Yeah, this was great. <laughs> you have an amazing day. 
Oh, oh, oh.